Well, we've looked at now the behavior of velocity triangles um, and how we can use that to extract some useful performance parameters for a compressor, but now let's look what happens if we apply it to a turbine. So compressors are typically con constructed of many stages, and though a typical turbine is still a multi-stage machine, it generally has many fewer stages compared to a compressor. And you may want to think about why, and we'll probably discuss that in class. Now again, we're going to restrict our analysis to a single stage here. Now the order of the blade rows switched for, is switched for a turbine. So it's stator, then rotor. Now note, in a Turbine, typically the stator, the non-rotating blades are not actually called stators, but are often called nozzle guide vanes. Now the stator adds swirl to the flow by converting internal energy to kinetic energy of the fluid. And then the rotor extracts work by removing swirl. So again, Assume that the axial velocity is constant and R is constant. Then we can draw a similar diagram to what we did before using an unwrapped view where we have an R theta axis and an X axis and we have station A, stator, station B, rotor, and station C. And the stator may look something like this. Stators. And the rotor may look something like this. Where these are again moving to the to the left. So we have ux equals ua at state state a station a. Leaving the rotor, we have the same axial velocity ux. The absolute velocity is aligned with the trailing edge. That's u b. Omega r connects the relative and absolute velocities, and so this is u prime b. This angle is beta prime b, and this angle is beta b. After the rotor, I'll move a little closer to have room to draw my velocity triangle. In the relative frame, the flow is moving far to the right but it's set up in such a way that the rotational frame of reference just brings the absolute velocity back to axial. So this is beta c prime and beta c is zero. So here again, if we look at the tangential velocity in the absolute frame, we see that it actually 
decreases across the rotor, which is how we know this is a turbine. And so similarly to the previous equation, we can use the oil or turbine equation to relate the stagnation pressure drop to the stage parameters. But in all other uh, senses, the analysis is identical.